Hello there, travelers. This is Noah Symes. You uh, haven't heard from me in a while, have you? I am here at the beginning of your episode with some very exciting news. I would ask for a drum roll, but I'm the only one here. We are producing our very first live show. Uh, I know this is something that a lot of people have been excited at the prospect of, and we are very excited about it as well. We are going to be doing a live production of Juno Steele and the Case of the Murderous Mask. Uh, it is going to be July 15th at the Rockwell in Somerville, Massachusetts. I'm producing. The original cast will be back reprising their roles, plus some of your other favorite Penumbra actors who you have grown to know and love since that episode first came out. Plus, there may even be some new bonus content that you've never heard before. Tickets will go on sale Thursday, April 19th at noon. That's uh, Eastern Time. And you can go to our website, thepenumbrapodcast.com slash live for more information. And that's also where the link to tickets will be once those go on sale. We're also going to be running an early bird special with a very limited number of discounted tickets that will be available just for a brief period when we first put tickets on sale. So if you're interested in that, act quickly. If you're not already following us on social media, on Twitter, Tumblr, Facebook, please do that. We will be posting updates in all those places as we get closer to the date. And we hope we can see some of you in Boston in July. In the meantime, enjoy this episode. It's a good one. See you soon. Ah, good evening, traveler. And welcome to the Penumbra. Take your seat, please. Take your seat. The junction lies ahead, so if you'll allow me just a moment. We are now passing through the Cerberus province. Our next stop, Juno Steel in the time gone by. So, what's the plan here? Shh. I can't, I can't believe this. Your entire deal goes to hell. It turns out that Ghost of Girlfriend's past is running around a decade past her expiration date. Shh. And she's wearing a tag that could kill her any second, and we're just sitting here? I'm sure your screaming makes Buddy's thinking much faster. Oh, hey, was that sarcasm? Maybe the big guy's got enough brain for a sense of humor after all. I have always possessed a sense of humor, Juno. You are just not funny. Come over here and say that. Whoa! I asked for quiet. I will clean this. Would you like another drink, buddy? No, thank you, darling. You may take his away as well. I believe he's had enough. Hey! I should hope you'd know not to drink and drive, Juno. And yet, here you are, drinking like a fish and driving me up the wall. Why are you here? What? I asked why you're here. Your work is finished. I've already told you that as soon as my friend and I sort out this mess, you'll have your eye problem seen to, and you know very well that we can find you. So, Juno... Why are you here? The one I uncovered by Buddy's flaming hair was burning holes into me. It was a look that fakers like me always dread. The one that said she expected me at my best and wasn't going to tolerate anything else. Only real leaders have that glare. They enforce it in different ways. Valis Vicky would destroy you. Captain Hijikata would make you destroy yourself. Ramsey's O'Flaherty would make you feel like the whole world was counting on you, so you'd better be good. And Buddy Orinko, I still didn't know what she would do. I didn't know if I'd survive finding out, either. My name's Juno Steele. I'm a private eye, and if you want to give me a panic attack in four words, why are you here is a pretty good place to start. Well, Juno, why are you here? I, I, I don't know. Yes, you do. Try again, please. What the hell else am I going to do? That's closer, I think, but still not quite all of it. What are you, my therapist? There aren't enough creds in the galaxy, darling. So? Uh, I... <laughs> We'll continue this discussion later, then. Throw me the comms, darling. Then you know what to do. Of course. Buddy Orenko speaking. To whom shall I bill this pleasure? 
It is Rasbach, though pleasure no is my word, Miss Buddy. I call you with the top, top displeasure. I can't say I understand why. We have our money, you have your cure, everything ended as we planned. Insult! There were hiccups, of course, but if you want to get technical, the interloping factor was one of yours. So if anyone should be angry here, I think it's me. I am stabbed! Stabbed! By a woman wearing a debtor's tag bearing your branding. Or did you think I wouldn't notice? Ah, <laughs> I see. I see now. It's just so with our sale, yes. Miss Buddy, you make the showing of honesty to harvest sympathy. Make you seem the one good, yes. And yet, you conceal the details top inconvenient. Oh, do I? My, how thrilling. I must be concealing them from myself as well, because I have no idea what you mean. I heard you. Before I left, I heard you say my servant's name. Vespa. If you're waiting for some big explosive reaction, you'll have to supply it yourself. I've no idea what you're talking about. It's shame. Top shame. Vespa, she is the servant excellent. Experience medical, competence high, no look sick, even. She has the moods violent, the sights and hearings unreal. Sometimes she needs the restraints, but... Is there a point to this? Ah, forgive me. I will be brief. The sound of your voice when you say her name, Vespa, it gives me the thoughts. You say Vespa as I say the names of family in Boulder, yes? I have thoughts that perhaps she is important to you in this way. We all have thoughts, Raz, and hardly any of them are worth the brains that are printed on. Ah, uh, it is possible I am wrong. Your culture on this planet Solar, I do not think I will ever understand. Well, in this case, if she knows it's matter to you, I will continue with the protocol typical. And what might that be? Our servant no work for free, eh? The radiation fatal goes through her veins, but with our blood filter, ah! We feel this with spawn bacterial of cure mother. And so we give Vespa life. But there's no cure permanent, of course. Cure mother is rare. Expensive. That is why we have you procure it at price high, I remind you, Miss Buddy. Top high. If a servant violate her contract, we no can afford this. So click off with filter and begin the burning. And Miss Vespa has the death top painful. A fate sad, yes. But the contract she signed is written in terms top clear. Miss Buddy, do we have the disconnection? <clears throat> Excuse me, Raz. I was just taking notes. Doesn't that seem a bit harsh to you, darling? A stabbing or two may be unpleasant, but our transaction ended as intended. A second chance... The board of fresh starts do not give the second chances. Vespa took our care medical. She signed our contract, and she must abide. And yet... I do see your point. Ah, the hole in loop. You see it, Miss Buddy? I'm concerned that I may. Should I possess the contract Vespa, a termination must occur. But contracts, they can be bought and sold, yes? You want me to buy her? Her contract, Miss Buddy. Hours ago you assisted those who buy and sell the contract. This is so different, really? I suppose not. It takes... stomach, this line of work. I have to say I underestimated you, Razzy. Most do. Oh, but wait! I forgot the information vital. Uh, the cost! How much does a human life go for these days, Rosbach? Hmm. A situation top difficult. With I explain to the company, with I cancel my appointments... With we meet today, yes, must today. I have been in Cerberus too long already. Must care for the health is vital. Ten million credits. So exactly as much as you just paid for the cure, mother. Ah, so you are certain to have it. Top convenience. If you'll allow me to think like a business vampire such as yourself for a moment, Raz, I might point out that a single worker should not be worth the same as the system by which you control all of your workers. Should not is so. Unfair is so. But the war, 
It taught me much, Miss Buddy. Is fair I no see the family? Is fair they should be seek, hungry? Is no fair. Is top no fair. And yet. And yet. I will see you in half hour at my office. You are pleasure with do business to, Miss Buddy. Goodbye. Goodbye, Rosbach. <coughs> <coughs> Buddy, Did you catch all of that, darling? I have recorded it, and I can confirm Rosbach's location. The call was made from the Cerberus board of Fresh Starts. Wonderful. An honest slave trader. Simply wonderful. That ten million creds is every cent we have. Yes, yes, of course it is. Every cent you have? You started this con with nothing? When we started, we had plenty. But heists cost money, as does reopening a bar five years dead. But- Do you know I'm going to be direct with you? I do not have time for whatever personal revelation is currently percolating in that prefrontal cortex of yours. This job has suddenly become important to me. Very important. And I want your help on it because your instincts have proven sharp, but I do not have time for your soul-searching. I've suddenly become a very poor woman. If you come with us, I cannot give you any payment other than what you've already earned. I can promise you that Rosbach... Is not going to make this as easy as he says. And Vespa, if you want to keep that head on those pretty shoulders of yours, we best hope Vespa does not interfere. This is who we're saving, and you're that scared of her? If she's as sharp as she used to be, I am. Medicine was not Vespa's only specialty. Razzy didn't mention the other, which means either she's out of practice or else she's been planning this escape for a long time. If you agree to help... I'll tell you as much as I can on the way, but I make no promises that I will be able to say everything. Well? Uh, Fine, I'm coming. I hoped as much. Dearest one, start the car. Yes, buddy. Twenty years ago, You could clear a room by saying the names Buddy and Vespa. Because in a lot of places, especially in the former Outer Rim before the war drained it of everything it had, those names meant something. They meant style and flashy heists and hold-ups at banks that boasted they could never be held up. Buddy and Vespa. Vespa and Buddy. My, we were a pair. Stars. Until we fell. As stars so often do. I'm trying to hold them off, but but I'll be open like this again. Ah, Vespa, uh, Vespa, uh, darling, uh, keep your balance. There's uh, only a few more steps, uh, and this is far too high to. Honey, uh. Vespa, no, Vespa. But then perhaps that's a bit personal, darling. After all, we've only known each other for a few hours. I think personal boundaries left the station when you got your goon to start spying on me. I am my own goon. Oh, congratulations. Listen, if you're gonna tell me this story, tell it right. You lived in the Cerberus province long enough to build up a bar and a dedicated clientele, but you're worried Vespa might have been down here for five years? You two must have called this place home way longer than that. Home is not always the place you live, Juno. Now hush, I'm telling a story. We rarely slept in the Cerberus province, if that's what you're asking. But this was always where we came back after a job to sell whatever we'd earned and do whatever deals needed doing. And that meant we only ever saw it once the danger had passed. We'd fly low over the volcanoes and see the lighthouse twinkling in the distance. And that, darling, that was home. No matter how tired we were, no matter how late it was, Vespa and I would always watch through the window when the lighthouse went by. That was our life for years. Then there was a night, I remember... When the lighthouse was not lit when we returned, and Vespa, I found that difficult. Something's wrong. Bud, you ever feel like... you ever feel like we're just doomed? In the sense of going to age and eventually die? Never. I just feel like I can feel it. Something bad. Feel you can feel? Well... Stop! Oh, come on, Vespa. You know I'm sorry. You just get so superstitious sometimes, and I... I I said stop! I mean, we'd have signed up for it, right? 
A life like this, running from the cops, sprinting from adrenaline kick to kick, we're, we're gonna get caught. Separated, probably. Vespa, that isn't going to... You're so positive of that, you shouldn't mind me talking about it. There. There what, darling? If it goes wrong, no, when it goes wrong, we'll meet there. The lighthouse. No matter what. Vespa. I can just feel it. It's coming soon, all right? I know it is. I know it. Just agree. Please. If you're so sure I'm wrong, what do you care? Of course, darling. I love you. And some days I even know it. Every superstitious inch of you. <sighs> I don't know how long it was. Months or years. But everything ends eventually. Doesn't matter how young and invincible you feel. Everything ends. Eventually. Our last job was in the Outer Rim. On Balder. A bank job of a kind we'd done a thousand times before, but... I'm trying to hold them off, but... but out in the open like this, I've got no... Uh, 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 Vespa? We must have missed a guard. And then as we were running across the bridge that linked the two bank towers, where our ship was going to pick us up... No! Vespa! She fell off the bridge. She did. How tall was the tower? Two hundred and fifty stories. The capital of Baldur is known for its high scrapers. The city high above and the city far below. The next laser came for me. And unfortunately, I did not fall. In the end, I suppose it's lucky that I wasn't wearing a stun-proof vest. I would most likely have jumped after her if I had. 250 stories. It is remarkable, yes. But she survived worse. She has a talent for field medicine. But even so, five years of radiation. We've arrived at the board of fresh starts. Wait, hang on. I still have questions. And it seems you will continue to have them. Our welcome wagon is on its way. What? Oh, wow, that's a gun in my ribs. That happened fast. Come with me, please. And who are you, precisely? What the hell is that blaster for? I didn't even do anything. Was meant, uh, this... Episu. What? Come with me, please. Rosbach has sent us security we can't negotiate with. I remember hardly any boulder at all. I speak the language his gun is talking just fine. Then I recommend you listen to it, Juno. The Board of Fresh Starts office didn't look like anything special, and that surprised me at first. Then I remember that the people in charge of this place almost never set foot here. They were probably all partying it up on some solid gold space station with radiation shields to go around. Let the poor get sick. Let the workers burn. Standard business practice, really. It was a short walk to Rosbach's office. He was... a little too excited to see us. Even accounting for the bottle of contraband painkillers on his desk. Ah, our guests. Top desirable. Please, have the seat. Have the seet. Haslana mivi das mu. A bit rude to leave us out of the conversation, don't you think? Ah, uh, they no said it. Rudeness, rudeness. Uh, but is rule top vital? Your, um, what is the word? Mevi, uh, mevi, uh. You see? You want us to give up our guns? Is so, yes. Weapons, they caused the meeting previous end, eh? No good. We do without now. If that's the price, hand them over. My, is look heavy. <laughs> that's me the episode. Ah, is rudeness. I told my servant to... To leave, yes. Can we conduct business now? We wait. We wait, and... Now business may begin. All right. Just like our last sale. Instant transference through our comms, verbal confirmation, fingerprint identification. Ten million creds from my account in exchange for the code to Vespa's blood filtration bracelet. 
Ah, uh, yes, uh, the creds. But of course, if they don't tell you they take the gun, you look this, eh? Uh. That's the cure, mother, I sold you, yes? Yes, yes. But the lock to this case, you see? Is broken. Is goods defective, you give me? It's not broken. It's unlocked. You've unlocked it. And the cure mother is fine. It's still glowing. You These require more payments. Fixing lock, uh, the test's verification on cure mother. These take money. Then the interest, the damages, the market shifting. How much? Should be... 20 million credits. Well then. I think that's the end of this meeting. Huh? The end? There's no sense in doing business with someone who's kidding you. Goodbye. You will not leave. Here, here is her blood filter code on my comms now. I will deactivate this. This Vespa, she will die. Ten million creds may come again, but once dead is no second chance. This we both know well, Miss Body. And if you no stop, Vespa will die. Razzie, this money isn't going to your company, is it? Uh, <laughs> well, you really do look out for your family, don't you? Is no the question, Miss Body. The question is, do you? I don't have twenty million crets. Then, uh, your ship. You no live in Cerberus province, yes? Yet you conduct the theft to your mother. You have spaceship. The deed, you will transfer it to me. Plus the code for briefcase. This is the cost final. Sold. Huh? Really? You are certain? I'm certain. Have you set up the sale or would you like me to do it? You sold our peoples. I never understand. To be fair, I'm from here too and I don't get it either. I will set up the sale, of course. Read. Here. Seems to be in order. This I know will risk, Miss Body. I can tell. Now, for code words. I, Rosbach the Eldest, Agent... Uh, I consent to this transaction. I consent to this transaction. My thumb. And now, yours. Miss Body, you are no hesitate? Of course not. Just taking a moment to say farewell to my life savings. Buddy? But it didn't matter what the big guy said. Before he could stop her, or she could stop herself, she held out her thumb. And that's when all hell broke loose. Basqueezy! The hell is that? Security alarm. Woodcart Lockhouse brand. There is an intruder on the premises. No now. No now. What the hell is going on? Quiet! You think you're getting the better of me, Miss Buddy? But I am the one of top control. Das Mivi. Oveles on das Mivi. Das... Uh... Well, that was very satisfying. Would you like me to kill him? No, no. I wouldn't want to deny his children a father, and I wouldn't want to deny myself the splitting headache he's going to have when he wakes up. Wow, uh, buddy, you timed this out really well. The alarm, the backup for... A minute there, I thought you really were going to give away everything you own. That was a hell of a con. I'd like to correct you on two fronts, Juno. But I'm afraid I'll have to do it quickly because we haven't much time. First, my timing was off by around five seconds because I really did give away everything I own. And second, this is what we, in the business of crime, would refer to not as a con, but as a worst-case scenario. Well, then... wait. What? Darling, take the door. You are not to let her leave here. I've lost her once. I will not lose her again. Understood. Juno, take the cure mother's case and hide yourself and Rosbach. In a moment, the lights are going to go out. You must be gone by then. This is... Vespa? Why why are you so afraid of her? What's she going to do? Do you remember when I told you that Vespa had two specializations? The second was assassinations. What? We're fresh out of time, darling. The case? The lights flickered. I grabbed the briefcase and grabbed Rosbach, and right as I slid under the desk, they went out for good. Vespa? It's me, Vespa. 
It's Buddy. And it's all going to be all right now. Vespa? You know what to do. She is not here. Vespa, stop it! You stop it! Vespa, what are you? Stop it! Your voice. I stopped imagining you. I stopped. Imagining? You mean... Vespa, I am not a hallucination. It's me. It's Buddy. And you're my... Don't! I stopped hearing you. I finally got over you. Finally. And now today, the day I was going to be free, I was done with this. I was done. Vespa. You aren't real. Get out of my head. Stop! Stop doing that! And in the dark, all I could do was listen to Buddy Orenko die at the hands of the woman she loved. The last seconds of a tragedy repeated twice. I felt like this had always been my problem and I was never going to escape it just standing and watching while a life gets taken away. Nothing different. Same old mistakes, always. Projection. If you do nothing, she will die. Would you like me to activate night vision mode? And there it was. That voice inside my head telling me that changing was pointless. Telling me that you might as well be a puppet to whoever or whatever wants to control you because hell, at least a puppet doesn't have to think. A puppet just listens to the strings, goes where the pulling takes it, so just give up. Why not? The target is dying. You can't change the past. You can't even change the present, really, because all you've got is that little corner of this moment you happen to have your hands on. But that corner... Your little part in this great big present, you can pull that any way you want. And maybe it won't work, but hell, if you got it, why not pull? So I ignored the Thea, and I opened up the Cure Mother, and its weird glowing light spilled out into the room. What the? Vespa? Please? Oh! No. No, 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 no. You're you're gone. I was Vespa, but I'm back. You were gone. I waited for you. I swear I did. The lighthouse? For months? But you weren't. You weren't. No. No, this is just what I want to hear. Damn it, V. Pull yourself together. This is a day you're finally gonna escape. This is a day you crack. Damn it, damn it, damn it. They're gonna get you, you idiot. Vespa, I'm here. I'm real. And you're safe now. Those awful people don't have your code anymore, and we have the cure, Mother. I'll give you your contract. You'll be safe. Safe? Ha ha ha! Always gives itself away eventually. Damn radiation. Damn it, damn it! Vespa? I couldn't lose you again. Just get the cure, Mother, and go, V. Pass God. Dead or dead. No getting back 15 years. No. I suppose there isn't, is there? Juno, slide her the case. Be careful not to lock it. Buddy... And if you say a second word about it, you might not survive to your third. The care mother. Vespa. Vespa. Vespa, if you can hear me in there, I just want you to know that I tried. I did. And I know that time's past us, darling. I know, but... I would like to try this again. Even if those 15 years are gone. Even if we're new people, you and I. Or ghosts, or... 
I'd like to see how these new people get along. I just want to try. Lights out again. Buddy, you all right? If you want to try with me, I'll meet you at our spot. Tonight, at sunset. The place I should have met you years ago. I'm so sorry we lost this time, Vespa. If I could have it back... The lights are back. And she's gone. Darling, are you all right? I am fine. I have been lightly stabbed, but it is not concerning. Oh, is that all? I think we really ought to leave now. But what about your money? And your ship? They're Rosbox now. We'd need his consent to get them back, and he'd certainly never give it. Would you like me to... Kill him! <laughs> no. Killing one of the million middlemen with dreams above their pay grades won't save a single soul in Cerberus. Let's leave now. I think I owe you the rest of a story, Juno. And we have somewhere to be by sunset. The lighthouse? The lighthouse. I served eight years in the Boulder Central Penitentiary after our heist fell apart, watching the faces of new inmates for her, but she never came. Then I was out. I got my hands on the money I'd saved for myself and bought a ticket back to the Cerberus province as promised. And I waited. For two years. Well, so much for being allowed to keep one's own secrets. He wouldn't have believed you if you said it. Two years. And she went up that lighthouse every night for hours, waiting. Then I pulled her out. She was not well. You went up there every day, but that's above ground. There's no dome. She was very sick. No. No, wait, hold on. Damn it, can you shut that stupid thing up? <laughs> Two years, and that much time above ground, you, you'd have gone nuts by now, right? You'd have lost your damn mind. Everyone experiences the symptoms of radiation sickness in a slightly different order, darling. Over time, one might develop hallucinations, paranoia, memory loss, uncontrollable moods, or conditions a bit more visible. Then Buddy Arenko pulled back the hair covering the left side of her face, and I saw what conditions she meant. From the cheek up, that side of her face looked like a dead body's. Not just burned like the woman in the street or the people wearing those debtor's tags. More than that. The skin was gaunt, shriveled, and gray. Pieces of it were missing. And in the middle of that ruin sat something like a camera lens ringed in yellow. And when her other eye blinked, a mechanical shutter clicked across it, sideways. Organ failure, skin rot, hair loss. Yeah, okay, okay. I get the Bone idea. displacement, food allergy. That's all food, of course, not just the one kind. I said I get it. <laughs> I was fortunate. The mental effects never had their way with me. And so I lived here for two years running the lighthouse and getting criminals and Outer Rim refugees as drunk as they liked, and every single night I would walk up the stairs of this lighthouse with dinner and wait for my Vespa to come. I knew she wouldn't, but what else was I going to do? Move on? <laughs> Nobody ever moves on because they want to, darling. We move on because we're forced to, and I only did because he forced me. She didn't open at the correct time. I became concerned. You took the door off its hinges. I was deeply concerned. If he had any sense at all, he would have let me die. But instead, he took me in that car of his and drove me back from the underworld. Some top-notch medical care and a bargain basement I later, and I was alive. I felt sorry for myself for another five years, and when I was done with that, I called my old friend here and offered him a job. I owed him, after all. He sold that car to pay for my eye. Even to afford a low-end eye, that must have been a hell of a car. We will not discuss this. And that brings us to today, darling. This is the first job of my second career. And I must say, I can only hope it's going to go in the reverse of the first. Start with tragedy, end with... Comedy. Ha <laughs> ha. So that's how you're hoping today goes? Comedy? Given enough time and enough hurt, you can laugh at anything, darling. But all things being equal, I would rather have the laughter now than later. I just have one last question. I'll trade you. 
If you answer a question of mine, I'll answer one of yours. Mine's really not that important. I'm just curious. Oh, neither is mine. Fine, then. I'll ask first. Why? Uh, Why what? Why did you decide to stay and help me? You didn't have to. We barely know each other. Yet today, a former lawman risked his life several times for a former criminal. And for all your whining, you even did a good job at it. So, why? Because... For a few months now, I've, I've, I've felt good. Not, not like good, good, but uh, like, like maybe I was on the right track, I, I guess. And, and then in the desert, looking back on all these months and realizing, damn, I really didn't help anyone, did I? Maybe I meant to, but I just wanted to see if I even could help you, okay? Because I... Uh... Go on. I just wanted to see if I could anymore help people. Well, that's quite an answer, isn't it? She smiled at me then, like she'd known I'd find the answer all along. And that's when I knew what kind of leader Buddy Orenko was. So, I believe you had a question. Oh, yeah, it's, uh... It's going to seem pretty dumb now. I'm sure it won't. Okay. Uh, If you're allergic to all food, what do you eat? You're right, darling. That was a dumb question. Yeah, I mean, I told you. I think I like you, Juno. I think you've grown on me. I'm going to wait upstairs now. Help yourself to whatever you'd like. Uh, She means the top of the lighthouse. No, I get that. I mean, what does she eat? I think I'll wait with her. Outside? You and I both got stabbed today, you moron. You want to get marinated in radiation on top of that? The sun has begun to set. Yup. It is very beautiful. So are most things that want to kill you. This has not been my experience. Hey, buddy. We almost done here. I can feel myself getting sicker. You're free to leave any time you like. It's sundown. She's not coming. Maybe you're right. So you're going to do anything about it? Buddy. She is ignoring you. Shut up. All right. So we waited. And the sun kept setting. Sunset was really something out here. The the domes have a blue tint, small enough that you stop seeing it after a while, but out here, unblocked and unblued, the sunset was wild. Alive, like someone set fire to the sky. And Buddy had been up here for two years, staring down that sunset killing herself slowly in the hopes that it'd bring her the only thing she'd ever really wanted. The sun is almost down. You're shivering. Yeah, well... There are coats downstairs. This is pointless, buddy. She didn't even hear you. God, you really have one of those music machine things up here, too? Does anybody even go up here? Would you like me to turn it off? Didn't say that. Hmm. So we waited, and the sun kept setting. I mean, it was a pretty thought, wasn't it? That the past could really leap back into your arms, have your love back, have your brother back. But it was just a fantasy, and soon the sun had set. We were in the dark with nothing but soft-boiled brains to show for all our dreaming. The sun has set. I can see that. Thanks. All right, bud, show's over. Time to go home. You and I only got one eye apiece, and neither one of us can afford to lose it. lighthouse lights came on and there they were buddy and vespa vespa and buddy 
Seeing them together like this, I saw just a glimmer of who they used to be, and there was something huge about them. Something bigger than life, bigger than people, bigger than all the years they'd been apart. Then the lights mellowed a little, and they were just two women who barely knew each other again, and the feet between them could have been miles. Vespa, you're really here. Buddy, it's really you. Vespa, I'm not assuming. A kiss, it, it doesn't have to mean anything, darling. We're just going to try this, see if it works. And... Oh, save it, bud. Well, a happy ending. <laughs> yeah. I think it is time for us to leave now. We have much to catch up on. Are you crying, Juno? <laughs> Shut up. You're crying. Let's go. Whatever. Indeed. You are owed payment for your services. We'll leave tonight. Sure. Tonight. Fine. Stupid music machine. Ought to be a law. Would you like me to turn it off before we leave? No, just... Let it play. Let it play. If you've enjoyed this tale, please consider donating to the Penumbra on Patreon. Our artists work tirelessly to bring you these stories, and if you have the means, we hope you will support our efforts. Every dollar helps. You can find that page at patreon.com slash the Penumbra podcast. If you support us on Patreon at a $10 level or higher, you will receive access to commentary tracks like this one. From actors Sarah Gazdovich, William Schuler, Chloe Cunha, and co-creator Kevin Vibert. Sometimes you gotta take time out and figure out what the noun endings for best queasy are. <laughs> <laughs> and that's just where you're, where you're at as a writer. Um, yeah, I mean, I know that uh, from, from, the, from the writing perspective, uh, I really based a lot of their, like, mannerisms, a lot of the, uh, like, little side things, the patterns of the language, on a lot of my extended uh, French family. Oh, yeah. um, which is why you've got which is why you've got Rosbox top. You can also support the Penumbra by liking us on Facebook, following us on Twitter at the Penumbra Pod, following us on Tumblr at the Penumbra Podcast, telling your friends about us, telling your friends to tell their friends about us, and especially by rating and reviewing our podcast on iTunes. Every rating, comment, and kind word spreads our stories further and inspires us to keep creating more and better tales to come. We would like to give special thanks to all who support us on Patreon, but especially to Camille Blanton, Ota Arcana, Juno Yanto, Reagan, Ko, KC, Kim Zygen, Aetha Lang, Vron, Charlie Spiegel, Minchowski, and Jamie Gunter for their incredibly generous contributions per episode. Thank you. Did you know that the Penumbra has merchandise for sale? It's true. The Penumbra has partnered with DFTBA to bring you the posters, shirts, and pins your heart desires. Just go to dftba.com and search for the Penumbra Podcast. This tale, Juno Steele and the Time Gone By, was told by the following people. Joshua Elon as Juno Steele. Alexander Stravinsky as the Man in the Brown Jacket. Sarah Gazdovich as Buddy Orinko. William Schuler as Rosbach. And Chloe Cunha as Vespa. The Penumbra is created and produced by Sophie Kaner and Kevin Vibert. If you wish to know more about our ever-expanding, infinitely creative team of artists, musicians, editors, designers, and managers, you can read about them in the show notes of this episode. I'm afraid this is the end of the line for today, dear traveler. We hope you will ride with the Penumbra again soon. <laughs> <laughs>